When Ted Cruz ran for Senate in 2012, he spent more than $14 million on his campaign. Democrat Paul Sadler spent just half a million. Cruz won by double digits. But this year will be different, at least when it comes to money. Senator Cruz does not have a huge fundraising advantage over Democrat Beto O'Rourke. This week, the Cruz campaign announced he took in $4.6 million over the past three months. That's up from the previous quarter, but it's less than half the fundraising haul for O'Rourke's campaign. He brought in more than $10 million in donations. That's his biggest total so far. O'Rourke says he will not take PAC money, relying instead on individual donations. That's not normal for a major campaign. Still, the fundraising strategy seems to be paying off. After this last quarter, O'Rourke moved ahead of Cruz in the money race. Cruz has more than $10 million cash on hand. O'Rourke has $14 million, but he's still behind in the polls. A recent University of Texas, Texas Tribune poll showed Cruz with a five-point lead over O'Rourke. Other polls show the Democrat trailing by double digits. Let's turn to our panel for perspective. James Berrigan covers Texas government for the Dallas Morning News, and Patrick Smitek reports on politics for the Texas Tribune. Welcome. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. So how important are these numbers right now? I think uh, they're impressive. I think they're important for Beto O'Rourke. Um, obviously, raising $10 million is, is impressive, and I think he's got $14 million cash on hand. But I think what's really important for him is what he does next with it. I think we've got to... Um, I'm going to be the person that co po pours some cold water on this <laughs> and then say let's slow down and see what happens next. We've got to remember that Texas hasn't elected a statewide official uh, as a Democrat since 1994. So it's going to be really important for him is to see what he does with that money. Oh, I agree with James. Yeah, it's a very impressive number, uh, but we're moving toward the part of the campaign where the fundraising isn't so much as important as how it's being spent and allocated um, because we have four months until election day and so I think a lot of reporters now uh, you know will be focusing very closely on how this money is being spent um, and what it's going toward because Beto O'Rourke still has this uh, problem that he's not really well known statewide and you have a few options going forward to solve that problem one of them is to air TV ads um, which he's been somewhat uh, ambivalent about and hasn't necessarily uh, committed to or at least committed to doing as much as previous candidates have and so I'll be watching very closely to see how that money is spent mm -hmm. and he's done a good job so far of doing the Facebook lives to go into the little cafes right. in, in red counties you know right. getting those small uh, uh, amounts and small crowds that really have gotten him those national headlines of Beto will go anywhere Beto is going to Facebook Live every single thing. But really, it goes to Patrick's point of, like, can he get that money and make that money work for him in terms of statewide campaigns or, or campaigns for TV in big markets um, where he maybe isn't so recognizable? And that's going to be tough because he's promised not to take PAC money. Right, yeah, he's promised not to take PAC money. He hasn't reached out to the DNC. He's not working with political consultants. What's the strategy there? Patrick? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I think it's something that, you know, he, he is trying to run what he views as kind of the most clean, ethical campaign. And I think it resonates with a lot of his supporters. They at least like the, the no PAC money pledge. I don't run into too many people who are excited that he has no consultants or no pollsters. I think right. maybe they'd, they'd like a little more uh, <laughs> assurance, a little more assurances there. But I think the no PAC money, I mean, it goes to the kind of campaign that he's envisioned. And it's certainly something that I think his supporters appreciate. And in all seriousness, I think he is trying to run a very different campaign from other Democrats. You know, as opposed to other Democrats who have gone out and have gone to the far left on the whole abolish ICE movement, he's been very careful about his statements around that issue, also around issues like DACA and immigration. While he obviously, I think, uh, prefers that there is a path for citizenship for Dreamers, he really prefers that Congress uh, takes care of that, which is something that could appeal to a broader base outside of just Democrats. Yeah. We know this week Lupe Valdez and Greg Abbott, they agreed to a gubernatorial debate on September 28th with our Next Star stations. I wonder how does the O'Rourke and the Cruz effect really impact races like that and other races down the ballot? I think from the beginning, uh, you know, politicos and experts have called the Cruz O'Rourke race the marquee race. Um, I think uh, Valdez joining the fray and her being the candidate against uh, Governor Abbott has really gotten a little bit more attention, but even at the Democratic Convention in Fort Worth, uh, Beto O'Rourke was a headliner, and she was kind of second, so it's it's kind of interesting, and I, I'm not sure um, how they're going to work together or whether they help or hurt, and I think there's been conversation even amongst them about how they're going to work together. So Yeah, I'd argue that the most important fundraising report of this season is actually Greg Abbott's, because you have 
um, a lot of Republican statewide uh, officials who are going to be a little farther down the ballot are looking up at Greg Abbott to basically carry everyone across the, the finish line. So some of these statewide, like Ted Cruz, maybe it's a little closer than usual. Maybe they have some unique problems in their race. Uh, but I think Greg Abbott is going to be, um, just with his $40 million plus turnout machine, political machine, whatever you want to call it, is going to be someone who's going to be able to uh, carry all these, have the resources uh, to turn out the vote up and down the ballot and, and carry a lot of these people across the finish line. Uh, I'm sure they'll do well on their own, but he'll be there to kind of reinforce uh, the ticket. Patrick, James, thank you very much. Thank you. Our investigation revealed police agencies in Texas severely lacked training when it comes to officers encountering someone suffering a mental health crisis. After our report, Texas lawmakers passed new training requirements. Now we're seeing how the changes are making a difference.